Hey guys, Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations. Welcome back to my shop. You know, with the conclusion of the little Canon model. This is the link to the Canon model. If you didn't get a chance to see it, go check it out. The latest and greatest project is a Stuart stationary steam engine. This is a D10. This is a vertical twin. And this kit was a gift from Mr. Steve Bright over in the UK. Steve was kind enough to send not only the kit... But he sent in reverse gears, he sent in piping, he sent in taps, dies, and I just can't tell you what a gracious gesture that was. Steve, thank you very much. We'll put a link to Steve's channel. Let's see if we can get it right there. Boom. Go say thanks to Steve for doing this for me. Uh, hit the subscribe button on his channel. Hit the subscribe button on my channel. Leave a thumbs up if you think this is going to be a build that you'll enjoy. Let's take a look at the plants first. a picture of what we're up against this is a nice little motor this is the kind of motor that you'll see in a, uh, a boat or a small locomotive style model this is all cast iron this is a really nice kit I have opened the boxes and we're gonna lay the pieces out that are inside the box and show you exactly what they do look like and how big they are the plans are quite interesting the plans are a combination of fractions and metric. I mean, we got a we got a quarter thirty-two tap hole right there in the center, quarter thirty-two, and then let's see. I mean, uh, another quarter thirty-two tap seven ba. So this is a combination of metric hardware, imperial fractions. And God knows what else. All this hieroglyphics here, I was really unsure of what that was. It's like, why can't they just give it a part number? But in this one view, there are actually four different pieces, and you have to decipher what's what. Some of them are sectioned. Some of them are positioned such that you have rotation views, and then you have two other pieces thrown in there like, okay, well, what are we looking at here? I know in the U.S., this view would be part of this view, and this view would be, anyway... Unusual the way they laid it out, but this is part two, part six, and part 15 all in one shot. Having already built a steam engine, let me slide this in a frame for a second. This is the PM Research Kit. Having already built this, I got a real good feel for what all of these components are, what they're called, and their function. If you haven't taken a look at the video where this was assembled or built run back through the catalog of videos on my channel check it out there's the box let's lay these pieces out and get a better look okay guys i'm going to try to do this as calmly as possible i am going handheld here so you can get a good look at all the parts the castings are very clean i mean clean by aligned and no pores and holes in them so that's a good thing Go up top, take a hole over top look. Cylinders, steam chests. I'm not sure what these would be called. Anybody knows, put it in the comment line. I'm sure it's on the plans, but I don't have that in front of me right now. I mean, I do right there. But they're not named. Covers for the steam chest. They give you all the gaskets. Give you all the raw materials to produce all the parts that they ask you to. And these are already pre-machined partially I'm not sure why that is but they are dimensionally I don't know how they conform so they'll have to be inspected before they are utilized and bear with me on the focus here for a second okay we are back a lot of nice castings here these will be the bearings for the crankshaft I am sure there's a couple that are complete, and the one in the middle that just can't be installed because it can't slide on will be a two-piece. So I would imagine half of this is for the bottom and the other half is for the top. All the hardware required. Valves. Or excuse me, yeah, they're valves, but actually so are these. These are the slider valves that go inside the steam chest. Connecting rods. I like it. Nice looking kit. Let's take a look at the reverse gear assembly, which is probably just as intricate as this. 
The reverse mechanism for this D10 is an accessory. The D10 does not require this in order to be a functional steam engine, but this will allow it to go into reverse once you engage this little guy right here. But boy, there's a whole bunch of components that need to be assembled, machined, and lined up and meshed perfectly in order for this to happen. Now, in order to make all of this, they provide you with this. Bar stock and hardware. And a couple of castings here, sections, and away you go. There's going to be a lot of nice creative fixturing going on here to keep these pieces in line, keep them from bending, keep them from breaking, and correctly positioned. And I'm really looking forward to seeing this. This is very intricate when it's done, and it looks great. I've seen it work. Not on this one, but I have seen it work. Now, there's some piping involved in the top to get the steam or air or whatever from one cylinder to another. That is also included or was included by Steve. So let's take a look at that. The piping required to get this thing to run correctly goes between the two cylinders as shown. And this is the piping that is actually part of the Stewart kit as an accessory. What a nice piece of work. Nice and clean. Everything appears to be acid washed or bright dipped. I don't know how they got that finish on there. That is really pretty. Everything is soldered real well. And finished. That is just beautiful. This is a very quality kit in my opinion and the money spent for it was well spent. And will be very much appreciated when it's complete. The other components to make connections as shown. So this will be towards the end. I'll do this at the end. I will do the reverse gear mechanism at the end. And for now, I'm going to grab one of these castings. Let's start with the flywheel just because I enjoy turning nastiness into jewels. So all of these parting lines got to go. First thing I'll do is hit the bench, get comfortable, and let's file these things out. Now before I start taking all these webs out of this casting here, I'm going to take a look at the features on the casting and select the file that I think is best going to serve the removal of that web without too much work. I have a variety of cylindrical or actually round files, tapered round files. These are not cylindrical files. And a tapered file is what I would recommend for this because you can do a variety of radius features with a tapered file from a very small to a very large or anything in between. Now the other kind is a teardrop file. This one here, if you were to cut this into a cross section, it would look like the cross section of an airplane wing. This is good for doing, you use the back side here for the corners, but so you don't undercut your corner as you sweep down in and out with this file, you lay it down and instead of getting a keyhole feature in the corner you can go from a round to a flat rather easily by oscillating this file back and forth set the camera up go some time lapse on these webs and see if we can make this thing look like something we got about two hours invested in this right now, and I am focused on the inside, the spokes, where the spokes meet the hub, and where the spokes meet the inside of the rim. One easy way, I don't know if you've ever followed any of the other flywheels that I've done, but use a black magic marker and mark up the surface you are filing down, and you can better trace your progress with the file. It really does make the parting lines stand out and let you know right where your file is hitting. And don't be afraid to keep putting the black magic marker on there to track your progress. Anyway, that's the end of this video, guys. I am not going to bore you with any more. I will put some more legwork, handwork, file work into these areas right here. And we'll pop it up on the lathe, and I'm going to show you how to clamp an irregular surface. Thank you very much for tuning in, wherever you are in the world. I hope you're well and happy and safe. All of the above. Me, Joel Pye at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. I'm out.